you know what did not pop in my head at any moment was should, should the, the Bears, Bears pay DJ more? But I walked in here, and that's the first thing you guys brought up. Bragg's topic, like it. And but so let's just and I immediately was like, well, I'm going to save my thoughts on this for the show. But so tee up, Greg, like why your head was immediately on DJ Moore. Well, I mean, I guess for two reasons. One, like I said earlier, I want to line up the money in the years with Caleb Williams' rookie contract. The, the value of having a quarterback like Caleb on a rookie contract is that you can pay the rest of your team now. That's how the Seahawks went on to win a Super Bowl with their Legion of Boom and all the great players that were on Russell Wilson. And then I guess the other reason is get ahead of it now. Give him the money either this summer or before the season ends because if he puts up the kind of numbers, and I understand DJ Moore's already put up great numbers in this league, but if he puts up you know, big time numbers with Caleb Williams at the helm and the bears are this great team that now they got to start paying other guys as well. Now, all of a sudden you're putting yourself behind the eight ball on who you're going to pay and how much you got to pay them. The, the wide receiver market obviously is what it is. You're paying wide receivers an insane amount of money. So I'm going to try to get ahead of it and get as much as I can value wise. Now, obviously DJ Moore will still demand a lot of money. But he could demand a hell of a lot more if he goes out and has an unbelievable season. So, I guess I just don't understand with the rush. DJ Moore's got two years left on a deal that now looks like an... It already was a bargain. And now it looks like an, an incredible bargain. He's making 16. Right. He's making less than half of what Justin Jefferson's getting. Justin Jefferson's a better wide receiver. But... DJ Moore is still really, really good. And I just I don't I don't know why what the rush would be. Does instead. linking up the rookie contract make any sense to you? But you already have that with Roma Dunze. Right. you okay, so let's assume Caleb Williams works out. You're paying him four years from now. Uh, maybe even three years from now, depending on how you know how, how you want to handle that. You're you, if you're extending DJ Moore, you're going to be tacking on at least three years to the remaining two. All I'm foreseeing is a problem of paying Roma Dunze if he works out, because you're not going to pay for two really good wide receivers when you have the quarterback contract. Part of the math here on why the Vikings can pay Justin Jefferson now compared to when they didn't pay Stephon Diggs and they traded him instead was because they were paying Kirk Cousins $45 million guaranteed every year. Now they don't have to pay that. So I just don't see a world in which you're going to be able to afford two big wide receiver contracts and Caleb Williams at the same time. And I guess my point is let this all play out for at least a season. What does DJ Moore look like right now? What does Keenan Allen look like? Are they going to try to extend him after a year? I mean, there's no momentum to do that right now because they don't need to. Is Roma Dunze going to even be good? I mean, we all think he is. We all love the draft pick. But let's at least see what one year of tape looks like for all three of these guys together with this young quarterback before you rush to commit any piece of the pie beyond the next two years to DJ Moore? Well, it's getting more and more challenging, I would think, for GMs because the quarter, now the salary cap keeps on going up and up, so there's more room. But the quarterback market completely exploded. Now the wide receiver market has re- exploded to the point that Justin Jefferson's getting $35 million a year. DJ is now the 16th highest paid wide receiver, if you like the way – at least front office sports is doing, and they're pulling their numbers from Spotrack. The way they compute it, and it's, you know the NFL contracts are always confusing, but they have they have them they've been listed at twenty million, twenty point six, which puts him sixteenth, right in front of Mike Evans seventeenth, uh, Amari Cooper, Chris Godwin, all in that range, and then you know ahead of Christian Kirk, who just got paid. Darnell Mooney's actually the twenty seventh highest paid wide receiver in the game. That's a hell of a job by Darnell Mooney for everything that he's done. Long winded way of just saying that. 
you got to where I was getting to. The first decision they got to make, the Bears have to make, is with Keenan Allen. Are is he does he end up fitting in here and being productive? And then what kind of short term deal could you possibly make with Keenan Allen if you want to keep him? That's going to be first up. Then from there, they're going to have to look long and hard at DJ. And I would think. You know, he'll be 28 at the end of this deal. I would think you'd want to do another three-year deal with him. And what's the number on that? You know, I, I think you're, 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 it's going to be somewhere between 25 to 30 million, you would think. That's where that one's going to land. And if he keeps on going the way he's going, I think the Bears will, will pay it, but they're going to have to get creative elsewhere. Did, when they extended Cole Komet, was that in his contract year? Or was that was there? I'd have to go back. Yeah, and look. last year was his fourth season, so right. it was going into his fourth. They season. were also offering Darnell Mooney and his contract year money, going reportedly going into. Yeah, and they had the Jalen Johnson thing. Right. So, you know, obviously waiting till his final year. They're not going to. I mean, next summer, then this becomes a legitimate conversation that they have to pay him before you go into the year. Right. I mean, that's all I'm trying to say is. Get ahead of it because that price might go up. It just seems like the money keeps going up and up and up and up. You know, I, I don't know what his comparable would be. I mean, to me, what does Amon Ra St. Brown make? We were talking about this last week. You know, to me, they're very similar players. Well, didn't so, he just get 30? Right. He just got paid. APY? Amon Ra's the second, third, now the third highest paid wide receiver. He's not 30 point. He, right. Just a he's not making that much more off of Justin Jefferson, right? Je- Jefferson's at 35. A.J. Brown's at 32. Amon Ra's at 30.002. Tyreek Hill is at 30. Jalen Waddle's 28. We were quarter. having the debate, Carmen and I, last week who's the better player, DJ or Amon Ra? And he was like, Amon Ra, clearly. Yeah, we had this discussion on the practice field the other day. If you were to have to pick all the. Uh, skill talent between the Lions and the Bears, what would the order be? And I think everybody was like, yeah, Amon Ra's number one. Really? Yes. I mean, I to me, I think DJ and Amon Ra are a wash talent wise. I, I really do. I, I don't I don't think I don't think he's any that much better than than DJ Moore. I think they bring exactly the same to the table. Well, so okay, well let's but let's have the discussion then um, with that thinking. So you want to commit thirty million dollars per year to DJ Moore right now right. to his year twenty, age twenty nine, thirty, and thirty one seasons. Right, I want to convince right now that two years from now he's going to be worth double than what he is now. You have no doubts about that. None. Twenty nine, thirty, thirty one years no, old. No, I mean make you see the production he's done with Sam Darnold and Justin Fields. What if Roma Dunze becomes Amon Ross St. Brown? Right. I mean, that's... Do you, need, do you need to commit that money? That's my point. Where I'm so just, you're saying in two years, they're not going to pay DJ more because they have Roma Dunze? No, I'm just saying... Well, I'm, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what the roster is going to look like. I don't know what Caleb Williams is going to look like. The point is just that, like... I'm not in a rush right now to commit thirty million dollars a year to a thirty-year-old wide receiver. I just want to I, lock up this core yeah. for on the Caleb Williams clock, which is the next five years. Rome's locked into this next five years. I just think you're I missing want, the, the fact that Amon Ra, I believe, is three years younger than DJ Moore. That makes a big difference. I I, I like where you're thinking about the the Caleb clock, but you don't really know. You know when when they're actually if he's good when they're going to pay him. You know, it. it what's the earliest they could pay him? Is after year three, right? That's yes, right. That's what he yeah. was saying. So yeah. if DJ, well, DJ would get That'd paid be, next summer theoretically. We, they, I don't think they'd wait for DJ's contract to completely run out. That why not? seems they might. I mean, that seems now. If you're telling me DJ Moore is willing to. Yes. Sign up for a huge discount for three more years stacked on. That's a different conversation. In those last couple years you can get out of, that's a different conversation. But I don't – I just think that this whole conversation makes more sense a year from now, unless DJ is willing to do that. But I'm guessing he's not. And that's the tricky dance, by the way, because if you start going down that road and you try to get him to sign a a team-friendly deal – 
then he could end up in the same spot where Jalen Johnson was at one point thinking that the Bears were disrespecting him. Guys, before we wrap our, our DJ Moore extension discussion, I just want to drop some numbers. I did a little research on why I think it might be better for the Bears to wait one season going into his contract year. And it has a lot to do with Caleb Williams, actually. I'm looking at rookie quarterbacks and what their top wide receivers have done. If you look, since 2010, there's been 28 quarterbacks selected in the top 10. 10 of them were the number one overall pick. Only three receivers reached 100 receptions in a season. One of them was Keenan Allen, actually, with Justin Herbert. The other two were Reggie Wayne and Adam Thielen. And only seven receivers eclipsed 1,000 yards since 2010 with a rookie quarterback selected in the top 10. So, I mean, I guess my point here is, especially with a number of mouths to feed, DJ Moore might not see the type of season he did last year. and You might be able to get him at a better rate because of that, even though it's not necessarily his fault. So is that the sales pitch that I make to DJ to give us a give us little a bit of a bargain yeah. deal? Because there's so many mouths to feed. You got Cole Komet and Gerald Everett and Roma Dunze, Keenan Allen, and DJ, DeAndre Swift. DJ, do you Swift. like winning? If so, right. sign here on a bargain, and we're going to make it happen. Hey, uh, just just a memo on DJ for everybody. And I, I like your heads out here, Stephen. But the dude just showed up to OTAs. Why are you here? Well, <laughs> 200 grand. Uh He's going to look at you sideways if you think that he's taken, I would guess, any major discount in the middle of his prime when he's putting up 1,300 yards last year, uh, you know, with Justin Fields, who, um, who with all due respect to, the, to everybody out there and, and respect to Justin, but come on. Uh, he hasn't played with a premier quarterback in the league, and he's put up big-time numbers. I don't think you're getting some major deal from DJ Moore when he knows that he'll be a free agent in, at 28. I don't think so no, either. It was but 29th season, Gary Ross. If you're doing this like an arbitration hearing, I think the Bears would have to argue why they should not be paying him 30 plus million and maybe a down, not necessarily a down year, but not quite the 1,300 yards would be a good reason why. Yeah. Also, just for, you know, not to be too much into the Bears' social media choices, but they made him Ferris Bueller. They put him in the front of everything. Seems like a guy that they're pretty pot committed to for a while. I mean, things could change real quick. I get it, but. But they clearly are, they clearly are, are, you know. Yeah, and typically I don't expect any player to take a, a, a deal, a bargain. Yeah. They're trying to get top dollar. Justin Jefferson, you know, does that hamstring their team a little bit? Yeah. Is he getting his? Yeah. That's how these contract negotiations work. They're going to get theirs. We all silly like the mayor. 